Finally, we have some good news. I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm just gonna jump right into the numbers. This video is gonna be all about last week. So November 27th through December 3rd. I'm gonna talk about my trucking company. I'm gonna talk about the loads that we ran, the brokers we worked with, how much we paid for fuel, how much we paid for repairs, how much I paid my driver. I'm gonna break it all down for you. If you've been following along, you know that I've had my trucking company for two years and I'm an accountant. I don't drive the truck, but I try to be as honest and transparent with you so that you can see what it's like for somebody trying to start a trucking company. As you know, diesel prices have skyrocketed and the freight market has crashed, so we're getting paid pennies on the mile to run these loads and we're paying six bucks a gallon for diesel, but it seems like things changed last week. Let me show you. First, I'm gonna start with the loads that we ran. So last week, we changed it up a little bit. We ran some shorter loads and we tried to stay in the Midwest as much as we could. So we actually ran five loads last week. I'm gonna to try to put the information on the screen as I talk about it, but I'm just gonna break it down for you load by load. So the first load we ran was on Monday. My driver is stationed in Pennsylvania, so we picked up a load in Pennsylvania and we went to Tennessee. This load had 50 miles of deadhead, 450 loaded miles, so about 500 total miles picking up in Pennsylvania, going to Tennessee. The broker was J.B. Hunt, and the total rate per mile was $2.04, including deadhead, which is not a good rate per mile, I understand that. But coming out of Pennsylvania, it's really what we expected. So the total pay was $1,134 for that load, but it, it put us in a good position in Tennessee the next day. So that load delivered on November 30th, and then we did a short load from Tennessee to Kentucky with XPO Logistics, and that actually paid us $4 a mile. So as you guys probably see on the load boards and talking to brokers, these short loads that are only like 100 or 200 miles, they're paying six, seven, eight hundred dollars So you can get a really good rate per mile. But if you have a company driver and you pay him per mile, he's probably not gonna be too happy if he's only getting 150 miles every single day. So what we're gonna try to do is mix it up with some loads going four or 500 miles, paying two or 225 a mile, and then some loads going 150 or 200 miles, paying three or four bucks a mile. Hopefully it averages out and we can keep our rate per mile Deadhead included above $2.60 a mile. That's the goal. So our next load was going from Indiana to Illinois. Like I said in the beginning, we're trying to stay in the Midwest because that's where the best rates are. And from Indiana to Illinois, we were working with Echo Global Logistics as the broker. And this load was another short load, 174 loaded miles, but to get there, we had to go 153 deadhead miles, which is why I always calculate deadhead when I'm looking at my cost per mile and my rate per mile, because deadhead is very important. So for this load, it was paying really, really good for loaded miles, 174 loaded miles, $785, that's $4.51 loaded miles, which is awesome, but you gotta factor in the deadhead. So we went a little bit more than 150 miles of deadhead. So all in all, total miles, 327 miles. So that brings our rate per mile down significantly to $2.40 a mile, which is still okay. It positioned us really well in Illinois to get a good rate per mile. So the fourth load that we had delivered on, I think like Thursday or Friday, December 2nd, whatever day that was, going from Illinois down to Tennessee, working with J.B. Hunt on this load, and only 27 miles of deadhead, because as you know, in the Midwest, especially Illinois, there's just loads everywhere. So we didn't have to go very far. We kept the deadhead low, less than 30 miles. Loaded miles, 222 loaded miles, total paying 880 bucks. This is a great load, $3.96 rate per mile loaded, but when you calculate the deadhead, the rate per mile drops down to still $3.53 per mile, which is an amazing load. A little short on miles, 249 miles, so we can't run these loads every day, but if we sprinkle these in with the longer runs, like this next load going from Tennessee to South Carolina, this load was 572 miles, still working with J.B. Hunt on this one. This was the final load for the week, so we picked it up on Friday and we ran it over the weekend, delivered it on Monday morning, December 5th, going from Tennessee to South Carolina, working with J.B. Hunt, 572 miles, paying 1600 bucks, so this gave us $2.91 per mile, which is amazing for a load that's more than 500 miles, but that's what you're gonna get 
coming out of the Midwest. If you come out of the Midwest and go to the Southeast or the Northeast, expect to get a really good rate per mile because coming out of the Southeast or coming out of the Northeast, you're gonna get a low rate per mile. So that's kind of the give and take. You get a great, mo a great rate coming out of the Midwest, going into a bad area, but then you gotta get out of that bad area. So just keep that in mind. If you're dispatching yourself, if you're a dispatcher, if you're a business owner, just keep that in mind whenever you're looking at your loads, talking with your dispatcher, negotiating with brokers, make sure you understand which markets are hot and which markets are cold so that you know, okay, I need this rate per mile going into this bad area because I know I'm gonna get this rate per mile coming out of that bad area. So all in all for last week, we did five loads, 1,870 miles, which is a little low, but my driver's okay with 1,800 miles. Like I've said in multiple videos before, he's a very safe driver, so he likes to take his time sometimes. And we got paid $5,000. So 1,800 miles, $5,000, our total rate per mile for the week. This is loaded miles and deadhead included, keep that in mind. Our total rate per mile was $2.75. That is amazing. That's better than we've had in months. So I'm very happy with last week. It might have been partially due to Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I know this is peak season. We haven't really seen the higher rates in September or October, but last week we had a really good week. I don't know exactly why it happened, but my dispatcher worked really hard. My driver did really well. Everything went pretty smooth. So we made $5,000 last week. Now let's talk about the expenses. First and foremost, my biggest expense is my fuel. So I use my fuel card with my factoring company and my dispatcher actually tells my driver where to get fuel. And this is really important. I don't want my driver just going to the most convenient fuel station because we can get really good discounts if he goes to the right fuel station. So my dispatcher looks at the map and he tells my driver exactly where to get fuel. That way we can take advantage of the best discounts. So last week we spent $1,500 on fuel, which is not bad compared to what we've done in the past. And we got fuel on average for $4.32 a mile, which is great. This week we got fuel for $3.97 for a gallon. That just makes me happy. So hopefully fuel prices continue to drop and hopefully rates kind of stay the same. That way we can all stay in business and we don't have to sell our trucks and quit these trucking businesses because let's be honest, the spring, summer, and most of the fall has been pretty rough. So hopefully diesel prices continue to drop. So I spent 1500 bucks on fuel and I paid my driver 62 cents per mile. So I paid my driver $1,174. One thing that did happen is he went pretty significantly out of route in Georgia over the weekend to visit some family. He didn't ask permission, he just did it. And I calculated the miles. He ended up going like 180 miles out of route. So I've already talked to him before about this and we've come to an agreement. I deducted that from his pay. So he burned about $135 worth of diesel to go those extra 180 miles. So I deducted that from his pay. So. He got 1,174. He could have got an extra $135, but he decided to go out of route for whatever reason. So I deducted that from his pay and we had one kind of significant repair issue happen in the beginning of the week. I don't know exactly what it was. It had something to do with the lights, maybe on the truck, maybe on the trailer. I'm not 100% sure, but we had to put it in the shop on Monday. So we actually ended up missing a whole day on Monday. So we would have had more miles, but we spent $440 to get the lights fixed. But even with that, we still had a good week, mostly due to the high rates, $2.75 a mile, and the low diesel prices. So we spent $441 getting the lights fixed, and then we spent about $144 on miscellaneous other stuff. So like 75 of that went to supplies. I think he had to get like, I don't know, maybe some windshield washer fluid and like a headlight or something. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but he said it was necessary. So he always sends me the receipts. Anytime he buys something for the truck, he always sends me the receipts. I always look it over, make sure nothing, nothing, just to make sure he's not using the card incorrectly. And then he typically weighs the truck almost every time he picks up a load. So we got four scale tickets last week. So that was like $50. And then I paid for one of his showers last week because I know if you go to particular fuel stations, you can get a free shower if you pump 50 gallons. But because we're so specific on where we get fuel, I would rather him, I would rather him sometimes use the company card to pay for showers and listen to us where we tell him to get fuel because we can get deep discounts if we go to the proper fuel station. I really consider 
consider telling him to not use the card for his showers, but he does it like once a week at 16 bucks. Maybe I'll change it next year, but for now, I'm just gonna keep rolling with it. I know it's probably not the best idea, but I wasn't clear with the expectation from the beginning, so I've, I've allowed him to do it up until this point. And just to keep him happy, I don't want to change too many policies at the same time. So I'm going to continue letting him to use the card for showers for now with the expectation that I'm probably gonna change that in January. So the last thing I'll talk about real quick is my fixed expenses. So everything I've talked to up until this point has been a variable expense. How much I make, all depends on how many miles I drive, how much I pay my driver, all depends on how many miles he drives, how much I pay for fuel, all depends on how many miles I drive, and the fuel efficiency of my truck. My truck gets anywhere between six and seven miles per gallon, depending on how long he idles and how heavy his load is and how steep the terrain is. And my maintenance cost is a variable cost. It all depends on what happens that week. Typically, if you drive more miles, you're gonna spend more money on maintenance. If you have an older truck, you're gonna spend more money on maintenance. So maintenance, fuel cost, revenue, driver, pay they're all variable costs and then obviously the scale and the miscellaneous job supplies those are also variable those are changing every single week but I want to talk about my fixed expenses real quick to wrap up this video so I calculate the cost of my truck on a weekly basis and the way I do that is I assume my truck's gonna last me three years so I take the total purchase price of my truck and divide that by three years and then there are 12 months in every single year so I take that annual cost of my truck divided by 12 months and then there are on average 4.3 weeks per month so I take that monthly cost of my truck, divide that by 4.3, and then that is the number I use for my weekly fixed expense of my truck. And plus I have a trailer, the trailer costs me like 30,000, the truck costs me like 65,000, and I assume the trailer is gonna last me five years. So there is a difference. I assume my truck will last me three, trailer will last me five. So on average, whenever I combine my truck and my trailer, it's a little bit more than $500 per week. So no matter what, even if my driver doesn't drive or if he drives 3,000 miles, I'm still paying a little bit more than $500 every week as a fixed expense for my truck and my trailer. And then I have my, my dispatch fee and my factoring fee. Those are also variable depending on my revenue. So I pay my dispatcher 4%, pay my factoring company 2.7%. So depending on how much, however much revenue I make that month, that much, however much revenue I make that week, Take that number, multiply that by 4%, multiply that by 2.7%, and that's how much I pay for dispatch fees and factoring fees. The last fixed expense that I'll talk about is my insurance. Same concept as with my truck payment. So I pay insurance monthly, but I want to capture my insurance expense on a weekly basis. So I take my monthly insurance payment divided by 4.3, and my insurance is $1,700 per month. So on a weekly basis, my insurance is $393. So after all of my fixed expenses, after all of my variable expenses, paying my driver, paying my dispatcher, paying for fuel, paying for repairs, paying for supplies, I ended up profitable $455. This is a great week. This makes me happy. I've had really bad weeks in the past. Looks like things are potentially looking up. I could have profited almost $1,000 if it wasn't for that miscellaneous repair with the lights in the beginning of the week. So this was an awesome week. If I can continue this trend, hopefully I can continue being profitable and keep my trucking company. Stay tuned next week. I'll give you guys another thorough update 